Hello. Hello. Do I need to put the volume up a bit? What if I move my shirt up? Hmm. I don't know. I don't want to mess with the delicate situation of audio mixing, so I'll fix it next stream. So, last stream, we got into development of uh, basic assembly stuff, really. Um, so let's go over here. Let's open up our DOS development thing and let's review our code. <clears throat> so we have our wrapper here in C++ that does some buffering. We're going to redo the buffering today in assembly because that's what I've decided. And we have our simple hello.assembly here that just prints out the line. Um, what? What the heck? Now, last stream I was pretty confused because I found out that you can only use DI as a register, you can't use AX. So, I dug up some manuals and we're going to go through them real quick. Um, where are we? Docs, Intel. Um, if we look at the IAPX 88 user manual from 1985, um, we can find basically everything we need to know to program the 8088 and 86 CPUs. And it's even got these nice picture in the front. Um, it looks really cool. I'd buy that. Um, the old, earlier versions have this picture at the front, which is just like kind of a, I don't know, it's very retro looking. And then it has this one, which is probably my favorite, which just looks like Really cool. Just dot artwork. I become a manual collector? No, no way. So we're going to use the 1985 version. Um, yeah, so it's for the 88. It's like an Animorphs poster, but for CPUs. So like it starts at 86, then 88. And then it slowly morphs out the one in the middle to become 186 and 188. So it's pretty cool. So let's scroll down here. Um, so there's a lot in this manual here, like probably too much. It goes into like firmware. Um, one of the manuals has like, let me see if I can find it. I think it's the... 8086 family architecture one. Yeah, and this has everything about the uh, IO processor and everything. So that's just for the entire family. So we're not gonna look at that today. But uh, it contains the same kind of information here in chapter two about the processing units. So let's have a brief sneak peek at this. Um, okay, so pass the index. So we have uh, the introduction, I think up here, or at the very start, it says something funny, so I'm gonna find it. Because it's a PDF, it's already bringing down my computer. So, I guess not. I guess I won't be able to find it. Uh, maybe it's in the older revision, hang on. I know I'm getting sidetracked, but you will have a giggle at this. Yes, this book describes the unique 8088 microprocessor, an outstanding choice for 8-bit microcomputer applications. What? So, I don't know. Anyway, let's, let's head back to the latest version. So we're gonna skip past most of the hardware parts. Um, it shows us a small system. Um, 
so it has the CPU, it has the bus matrix, I believe that's what that is. Um, and then it has stuff attached to it, that's pretty cool. So that's the architectural overall uh, overview block diagram of a multibus system, Intel likes multibus. Here's a simplified diagram of how the CPU actually works inside. Um, nothing fancy, it's just an ALU, has some registers. Nice. Um, I, I'm not sure if this says it, but um, one of the, uh, one of the um, data sheets I read, I was on a binge, um, talks about how the segment registers, which are a bit strange, um, $1,000 radio, yeah. So the segment registers um, on 8088 lets it address up to one megabyte of memory. Um, and that's basically done by specifying um, a 16 byte block address and then an offset into it that's up to 64K. It shows us the uh, instruction pipeline here. Um, that's pretty cool. Eco Gamer. Um, general registers. It's pretty cool. Segment registers. That's all pretty cool. Um, it shows us how segments can be overlapped or partially overlapped or contiguous and disjoint. Um, it's very strange. Oh, here it says, the segment structure of the 8086 slash 8088 memory space supports modular software design by discouraging huge monolithic programs. The segments can also be used to take advantage Sorry, the segments can also be used to advantage in many programming situation. Take, for example, the case of an editor for several online terminals. There's a text buffer that could be assigned to each terminal, and then you could maintain all the buffers by just changing the segment. So like, look at that. That's an example of switching between multiple segments, but still running the same code or blocks of code. It's a bit weird. Um, The generation is that it takes the segment base and shift it left four bits, which just basically means multiply by 16, then add the offset. Um, and that gives you the final thing. Some other interesting thing is that it supports dynamically relocatable code. So this has the foresight of like being able to swap things to disk and just move stuff around in memory. That's pretty neat. I like that. What am I programming a Twitch bot for? I want to go back to 2019 and ask myself that. So here we go. You can do memory defragmentation. Now, all this is quite strange because you don't actually see this happen. And that's when you get reminded that we're programming DOS and DOS isn't actually the best system for this CPU. Wait, why are you looking at IAPX stuff? I'm not. Um, that's the funny part. Segmented memory and all that is like big thing in the 8088. It's not like as protected as the IAPX 432, but uh, you can kind of see how Intel is like, we need segments so bad. Why isn't DOS the best system to use? So DOS is meant to run one program and basically give all the resources of the system to that program. But you could run like a Unix system on one of these CPUs. Like you have a megabyte of RAM. Um, so what could you run that was kind of Unix-y? You could run QNX. Um, let's see, is there a WinWorld thing? I'll search it up, QNX 8088. And you could run a little Unix system on it. Uh, I think it's 4.2 here. That runs on the IBM PC. It doesn't have a picture, it just has an ad instead. Um, maybe there's a demo. 
I'm not sure if that's for the PC. Yeah, that's for the 386. But in more modern times, there's actually something called the embeddable Linux kernel subset. Um, which runs a Linux subset on an 8086, the 16-bit thing. That's pretty cool, right? You get to run a little uh, <coughs> a Linux-like system. That's pretty cool. I like that. Maybe we'll port the bot to that one day. But that's pretty cool. I like that. And it kind of shows that this processor isn't entirely the issue with old software being trash. It's more that IBM just really cheaped out on software. Or like, I don't know, it's not fair to say that. It's more just, um, IBM was trying to build a cheap uh, computer from the parts it had. And I think the lowest bidder was Microsoft, who made DOS. I'm drinking water. I have some kombucha for later. Um, but we'll get there. Anyway, so we have some software overviews. Um, we have some uh, data transfer instructions. It's pretty cool. What's my favorite kombucha? Any, I got raspberry lemon here. It's pretty cool. Um, we look at the kind of uh, weird instruction set where like instructions can be multiple bytes long and it's variable length, but that's just to save space. So I kind of get it. Why do I like it? Cause it tastes good, bro. So it goes through all the instructions we have. That's pretty cool. Um, so we're going to be using this as a bit as a reference. Yes, it tastes good. It It's a drink. You taste it. It tastes good. So here we get to operand addressing modes, which is where I struggled last stream. So you can, like in your code, you can put um, an immediate value or you can put like a register. That's pretty cool. You can't put an immediate value as the destination because it makes no sense. Um, I actually, I, I think you can, maybe? No, you can't. Yeah, um, so memory addressing nodes. This is where we got a little bit confused. So you can specify um, a memory address, which is here as a source or destination. Register indirect addressing is what we were doing. And there's based addressing. And so this is the big table for how we do register um, indirect addressing. Or really, this is the this is just kind of the table for it. So you can see how we have the four registers that we were talking about before that I was getting confused about. Then you can add a displacement, and then you can add a segment register. Um, then you can add, and then it gives you a physical address. That's pretty cool. Um, you can add two indexes or whatever. So like, um, if you have an array, you can say, um, like start of the array, then put like a number for the index of the array here in a second one, because it just adds it together. And so you see that with these diagrams here, you have direct addressing, you can add a displacement, register and direct addressing, you can use one of these four registers, BX, BP, SI or DI. Um, based addressing um, adds a displacement and then indexed addressing adds um, adds a actual displacement. Um, hang on a second. 
this is confusing. Accessing a structure. Okay, yeah, so that's just base addressing. So, you know, you add a number and then the base register. And so, for an example, in this structure, it has like an employee in structure and then like you have the base register being the employee. Then you add the rate and stuff like that, which is a displacement. And then based indexed addressing is just adding two registers together and a displacement. There's a lot of stuff here. Um, in fact, if we search up this, I think it was x86 addressing modes, which we searched up last time and we go to whatever first blog post I clicked. Um, it might show a diagram here or not, maybe. No, it might have been here. You see something of the same. Okay, it's making a liar out of me. Okay. Um, let me search up 8086 uh, addressing mode. Lies? Yeah. I just need to find the one that has a diagram. Let's search images. I think it was on Wikipedia. So let's search up Wikipedia. It might be this one. Yeah. Here's kind of what I saw and what we see in general. Um, you see um, another kind of addressing mode, which is basically the same thing, but it has a scale where you can multiply um, an index by something, which is pretty cool, but that's only for 32 bit code, not 16 bit code. So we don't have a scale. That's just a clarification. My day is doing pretty good. Um, string addressing, um, use the index registers. So figure one, two, six. Um, it uses SI and DI, and I think each instruction it, uh, um, increments them. which is pretty cool. Um, another thing is that the IO ports have their own kind of memory system that isn't shared in the main memory, which is good. That saves memory. And then we have all the instructions here and you can kind of figure out from them what they do and how you can use them and what flags they set. So let's get on with it. All right, I just had a mind fart, that's all. So we're going to do some line buffering and we're gonna think about this first because I think this code might be broken in a kind of subtle way. Oh no, it's not. I thought this was blocking this in queue. So what we're going to do is have some logic like this. We're just going to write it out in pseudocode. So when we get a packet, we're going to do something. Uh, we're going to do something with the packet. And so this is probably going to be breaking into lines. Um, and then in there, we're going to, uh, I don't know, print them for now. And then after we do something with that, in the same kind of place that we do things with the lines, we're going to in queue up, um, we're going to add to our packets. We're going to in queue data or something. So we're going to have to see how we have a TCP buffer. We're going to say, we're going to write to that. 
right to TCP buffer. Um, up to a thousand, I think. This is where it gets a bit strange. Um, because what if we run out of space? I guess we just give up. Um, I guess we could send them off. But by the time we've done all this, um, Wait, what does send line do? Um, so it DQs a packet. All right. Where does it get this packet from? Get xmit buff. All right, so it has separate buffers for incoming and outgoing. I think xmit, I don't know about that, but we can get a buffer. Um, that seems fine. So we're going to write to the buffer um, and then at some point we're going to send it. Um, we're going to need it to be able to kind of run over a little bit. It's unclear what to do when it's full is what I'm saying. Because the data in does not necessarily mean it's the same amount of data out. So we might have to make a rule maybe of how much data we can generate um, given a packet size or something like that. Um, or we should just decide what happens when we run out of data. Could we uh, send the packets off? Um, that could be a good idea, right? So we write to a TCP buffer and then send if full. Um, yep, that seems like a decent idea. Then once we've done with that, um, this should actually be do something with the packets, the incoming packets. And that should break them into lines. Then for each line, we print them, then write to the buffer and send it there for. So that code seems kind of decent. That's kind of what it does there now, but it's a bit confusing. Um, so that's going to be our basic echo bot. So how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to have to take as much um, stuff we can do that's in, that would be dosable out of here. So, um, this we can't really do much about because it requires interacting with C++ stuff. Process packets. Um, not much we can really do there. That's kind of going to be our main loop. So that would be here, breaking into lines. That seems like something we should do in assembly. And then for each line, print them. So all this can be done in assembly, I think. And then we will just need some code to uh, send the line. And that will have to be, hmm. That's an interesting function to think about. Because in here, we're given the packet. Um, or are we? Yeah, so we're given a packet. So the, ass the assembly would actually be a something about like this. Um, we would call out to the C code. So we would have um, something like um, while there's three packets or we have a C function that says get next packet and then um, push packet or something like that. 
but get packet and push packet. And then we would do something like, um, get packet. Um, if it's not zero, as in like, if there's no packet to get, um, then we want to break in the lines. This would be a call to C++ um, for each line. We print it. Um, and then we're going to remember our packet buffer. So we might want to have, instead of get packet, it should be um, send data. Let's just remove the idea of packet from the DOS code for now. So it'll be get data and send data. So we're just dealing with buffers and then we can send data. Although, no, that should be fine. Although, yeah, we're just gonna have get packet and send packet. And we'll have to have a little buffer for the packet. So, uh, write to packet buffer, send packet. And send packet, let's get some variables here. So let's do in data, and then we'll have out data. get free packet. And then in the case where um, in the case we send it, um, if buffer is full, then we're going to send it and then replace the buffer. So that looks kind of reasonable. I say kind of because, um, I don't know. So let's remove, let's not remove stuff. Let's just look at what we need from C++. So we need get data, which should return a, um, sorry, get packet, which should return a, character packet. Um, it would block, I guess. Otherwise we can't really do much. We would have um, get free packet or get transmit packet. We could probably make this um, a function that does it kind of atomic, not atomically, but two in one. So it could just be, instead of get packet, we could have it be receive packet and then transmit packet. Um, and if you specify a variable, um, like an out variable, it will send it or an existing packet. Hmm. We'll have to figure out how do we actually build a packet here? Data, so send line copies it to the TCP buffer. Do we wanna just write to the TCP buffer? That seems like a good idea. I think we're allowed to do that. So transmit packet, we have our out. Um, yeah, that seems fine. And then we have, if out is null, it just won't send anything. So receive packet, and then we have transmit packet null. Um,
If it's not zero, it should never be. Well, if it's zero, that means the stream has ended. So how do we tell if it's ended? I guess we could return zero if it's um, ended. Should probably check if either of those are zero. If in data zero or out data zero, we're going to exit. And then we're going to do our main loop or main loop thing. Can I actually unindent that? Yeah, okay. And then we're going to have a jump back to the main loop because we don't have that. So we're going to do, we're going to do that. I think, um, break into lines. Um, I'm not sure what that means exactly. Are we going to, I think that would be, yeah. So we might need an intermediate buffer there in case something is split over. So I see why we have the line buffer. So we have a line buffer, 256 or whatever. Um, we're going to copy in data to line buffer until full or n as in new line. No, we're going to have a copy. All right. We're going to have a loop here. So copy loop. Um, we're going to check if um, in data, we're going to basically go through in data and plus plus it and use that pointer. That'll probably be in a register, right? So in data plus plus to get to the next value. Actually, no, we should probably do that here. So like, um, C as in the character is in data. Then we increase in data. Um, and then we're going to copy it to line buffer. So line buffer equals C and then we're going to do line buffer plus plus if line buffer out of range, what do, and then if C is N, we will do something with the line. We will print it. And we'll worry about transmitting packets later. So this will just print incoming packets for now. That seems reasonable. Now you may think that has taken me a long time to write. Um, you are not prepared for how long it's actually going to take to write in practice. So we're going to not worry about the transmit packets for now. And we're going to go back to our drive C code bot and copy the old bot.tcp file. And we're going to do this. Um, we're going to add a function that is receive packet. So what are we going to do? This is going to be an extern thing as well. Kind of. So receive packet is going to, what will it do? I guess it's going to be the same as process packets. So we're actually going to call ASM loop here. And this is going to be ASM loop. And we can just return if, uh, 
it fails. So ASM loop is going to be a function. Um, so that will be extern C void ASM loop void. Okay. And ASM loop will be able to do receive packet. And that will run this code basically. Let's just change that. So receive packet. Ha ha ha. It drives it, it drives packets. It checks. And in some cases we return zero and that's fine. And here we're going to have to somehow return the length and the actual um, data. We have to return the data and its length. And then we have to free it after we're done. So I guess we will free it by providing it the packet before. So this is going to be some kind of packet trading scheme, I guess, where we get a packet in and we give the old packet. That's a bit weird. This is getting a bit complicated. But that's okay. So, or well maybe this is a bad idea. Let's think about this. In C, you can't really return two things at once. You would instead provide pointers. So perhaps we could provide a pointer to a packet pointer. Or what if we just have a global current packet pointer? I know we like globals. Um, so we're going to just make a function called current packet. Or receive packet. All right, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to have a current packet and this will return a buffer. We're going to refer to buffer uh, packets by their buffers. And then we will do return packet buffer. Hey, Misaki, what's up? I really, okay, we're not going to use the word receive anymore because I just can't spell it. We're going to call it sent, uh, current in packet. Or we'll just use the Unix receive, okay, just R-E-C-V. You can fill your water bottle, this is going to be a long one. Um, a long boy. And we're actually going to internally keep a TCP buffer. Um, no, we're actually going to keep a copy of the actual buffer, the receive packet, which is, yeah, from MTCP. 10,000 hours. I hope not. And then we're going to have receive new packet. I think that'll be good. And that will update the current receive packet, which you'll then have to call. And that will return the length. Ooh. And it will also free the existing packet. See, we're getting somewhere. Find it. This is all pseudocode. Let's dump all this. Um, by dump, I mean, yeah, let's dump it. We have a backup file, I think. We're just making something that echoes data. 
lines at the moment. Remove the line stuff. There we go. Um, you're probably Duke's having to wake up once in a while to do stuff so Twitch doesn't ban. <laughs> yeah, you're probably actually wondering um, why I'm doing a function here to wrap this uh, this variable. And let me tell you something I've learned when writing code. This is a trick of the trade. Um, not just that global variables are bad, but this allows you to return a different thing based on something like a stack or a scope that you're in. So by having a function like this, we can write code as if we're using global variables, which is cool, A+. Plus. But when we actually call this code, we could set this to be something different before we um, actually run that code to create kind of a uh, scoped environment. Neat, huh? Um, so set up socket, connect socket, external C, current receive packet. Um, receive new packet. I don't know if we need to put this whole thing in extern C, but why not? Uh, we won't put the receive packet there because that's kind of a private variable. So current receive packet gives us the receive packet or null if there's nothing there. And then when you do receive new packet, it will free the receive packet, which might be null. So let's initialize that to null. I don't know which null you should use in C. Uh, and now we have some kind of inverted logic where now we need to drive packets and there might be more waiting in the queue. So we could use a callback here um, we could have some kind of callback, but I don't want that. Okay. That's not me. I don't want to be using callbacks because, um, this way just makes it so that I can write code as if there's a global mutable state and then later shim out the global mutable state. Um, so we're going to figure out how this works, but this is kind of going to be our interface. Um, we have our receive packet, then we have receive new packet, and that should just dequeue something um, and return it, right? So mainly this code, and if that doesn't work, we should get new packets and then um, maybe do something about that. And then we have this extern void ASM loop, which is going to be the main code that we run here. Um, I don't know why we have RC. We'll just set RC there so ASM loop can return a value. Now return. Um, and it will probably have to, uh, I don't know, do something. So we have extern current receive packet and then receive new packet. And that returns the length and this returns the packet buffer. So let's wipe all this code, I guess. Um, maybe not. We'll rename it from ASM code to ASM run. And let's just dummy out receive new packet for now. And we'll have it return zero. That seems fine. Let's TRC stream. 
don't like that. Okay, so we have some dummy stuff now. So we're going to run something and it's going to call receive packet. And then it's going to do receive new packet, which should be zero. So um, we're going to do global ASM run. I think we need to put a dash over there at the end of these things because they're defined in C. Um, I think we should probably like push a whole bunch of stuff onto the stack. Um, we do have an actual push function for that um, to push everything onto the stack that is in the 8186 and that's acceptable. P for push please. And I'm in OP. So pop push so it would be push F or push A. Push A and push F, I think. I don't know. Do I need to push F? Probably. Um, so let's do close all that Firefox stuff. So we're going to do push A, push F. That same is fine, right? And then at the end, we'll do pop F, pop A. You should probably do the flags. Well, does, do you, does the pushing modify the flags? It doesn't look like it. I don't think so. We'll just do this order. And then we will move AX zero and return. I think we return using a register, right? Yeah. So ASM run is just going to return zero for us. And then we're going to do return RC, I guess. And let's have it return, I don't know, 42 for now, or three. We'll have it return three. Um, all this junk can be comments. I know it hurts to hear that. Don't worry, it hurts me too. And then we'll just, oops, I scrolled way too much. So let's see if this builds. Implicit conversion of pointers, line 53, 52. Oh, that's right. It's returning a U into eight. Gotcha. And invalid syntax in external declaration, hello ASM3. That's because I didn't do a comment. Why am I writing C++? Um, that's a good question. And I have an extremely well thought out answer for that. Any other questions? Segment relocation warning, undefined symbol ASM run. Oh, I have to uh, define it, don't I? Oh, no, I don't. I have to actually set up the label here. Every time the code compiles fine, I get to have a sip of kombucha. <laughs> oh, cracking open a cold one, eh? Ah. Okay, I'm not going to be that dramatic about it. Let's see if this does anything. Now, it in... It did not infinite loop. Um, how do you get the return code in DOS? DOS get return code. It tastes like beer with none of the fun. How do you, oh, do I do like a, can I do like a bot or echo high? 
Wait, doesn't that mean re it returns one? What if I do end end? Okay, so it's returning one. Is that true? No, it's returning three. Fine. Let's try this now. And it's still returning zero or uh, returning a a one. So we're obviously messing something up here, huh? Wow. Um, so let's check out how we actually check the return code. Rem echo error level. Is it error level? Echo error level. Echo is on. It's not what I want. I'm not angry. I keep clicking the wrong stuff. Let's move that there since obviously I want to click that. Echo error level. Print error level. Env. Set. Hmm. Okay. All right. Huh. Well. What the hell was that? Was there just like two dudes kissing on... Was that like a hatred... Was that anti-Semitic? What just happened? I think I might need to go back and just... Do I have a VOD for this? I probably don't. <laughs> no, don't say jukes. Hang on. Hang on. I'm going back. I'm just checking my video. Oh, I can't skip. All right. So we're just going to believe that it's fine and that it wasn't. It was a optical illusion and it wasn't like two Arabic cartoon characters kissing. I mean, I don't have anything wrong with that, but usually people don't put stuff of gay Arabic cartoon couples in a tasteful fashion that isn't meant to be like a really offensive. DOS get return code, get exit code. It's called an exit code. Error level. How do we print error level? You didn't miss anything important. Look, echo error level. It's supposed to work. Echo is on. So it's not, it, okay. So error level isn't defined. I've got to go back and make sure. <laughs> no, the viewers demand it. No, you can go back and report back. Just screenshot it for me. Bot, show me the error level. Can we tab? No. So we're going to need something more creative to figure out what the return value is. Um, and that's going to be printing it. Oh, this font. How can anyone read syntax highlighting? Oh, it grinds my gears. Gears. All right. Return is three. So it does return fine. So if we set that to zero. And we do W make. And then we run it again. Turn is zero. How come it doesn't echo then? What is a DOS successful exit code? Is it zero? What, what does, what is the successful exit code for DOS? What decides that it ran successfully? Is it one? Is it one? Why would it be one?
It's not that. It, bot or Echo 1. Echo 5. So, I don't know how to return success. Does main just not return success? I mean, I know there's exit success. Should I be using that instead? But no, it just seems to want to echo stuff regardless. True or echo five. So that fails. Um, LS or end or or echo five. All right. So I just don't understand what's going on here, and I don't want to dig into it too deep because we have something to do. So what are we going to do here? We're going to run. Um, we're going to move AX zero. We're going to call current receive packet that will fill up our AX boy. Um, and we're going to, I guess, put that into the destination index register because we're going to be looping through it. Um, is it the DI? I think it might be base pointer. Yeah, let's put it in the base pointer. Um, and then we're going to... I suppose we should also just first compare if it's zero. Um, so how do we check if it's zero? I think it's using compare, right? Compare. Okay, so how does compare work? Wait, no, we do a compare, then we jump if it's not equal or something. Let's find J and E. So jump if, yeah, so we have all these jumps. Jump if, is there equal? If, jump if zero, okay. So compare AX with AX, I guess. Jump zero um, to fail. Um, and then bail can be down here. That just is like bail. Then we pop everything and we return. One. That seems like a little bit of a waste of code, but whatever, we can optimize it later. So let's add this back. So it should return that and uh, let's just copy this code. Um, what? I'll just have a bail too then. We should be being a bit more nice about the register stuff we use in order to not have big end conditions like that. Um, so we bail two and that should return value two. And the current packet length should be AX. I will write AX equals lang BP equals um, buffer. So that should get us to about there, I think. Um, and then I guess we would have a jump back to um, ASM loop. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah. There we go. That's fine. And we're never going to return there since we're looping. So we're only going to bail. Okay. Let us see if this thing is going to do something cool. Yes, I drunk kombucha. Should this file be deleted? I don't know, dude. I don't care. I'm going to override it. All right, let's run bot. Retent is one. And that is because um, current receive is null. So if we set this to one, it should return two. Oops. Oops. Um, can we just cast a pointer like that? This might be a bit, no, it seems fine. Return is one still. Why is that? Receive packet should be one and it would jump to bail. So my compare is not working. So we need to compare. Test, it might be test. Invalid combination of opcode and operands. Listen here, buster. All right, we're going to just go down. Flag operations. Um, where is compare? Call CMP, compare destination to source. Um. What does jump zero do then? Does jump zero... Hang on, let's see. Jump zero. JZ. Our boy JZ. Where's JZ? Jump equals operands short label. Jump if equal jump zero. So what does it take as an input? All right, yeah, so the zero flag. So how do I set the zero flag? Okay, well, apparently you're supposed to run text. So what's compare? What is compare if not test? Compare destination. So what does compare do? I feel like I should be reading the compare section of the manual. It's identical to the sub instruction, except it does not test operands. Compare with one, jump if not zero. So let's just try test. If it, if it returns one, then test AX AX. Okay, all right. I'm doing that thing again where I don't read things and get confused. So I'm going to sit down and we're going to quickly read this. So logical stuff. Here we go. So string instruction, registration and flag is program transfer, unconditional transfers. All right. So we have the conditional jumps and those jump based on the carry flag. That's uh, on various flags.
so these tests, these conditions make sense. It uses unsigned value. It has some signed and unsigned values. Um, we have set carry flag. Are you going to show me how to compare stuff and test stuff? Compare test. All right, we're going to search up the compare then and see where it was referenced. Was it referenced before here? Probably. Okay. So this section is instruction synchronization. So compare is basically checking if something is equal, I think. Oh, here we go. Compare byte or word string. That's a string instruction. I don't want that. So compare is equivalent to subtraction. Which would mean we want to compare zero and something and see if it's zero. Um, but shouldn't we like, ha what's the test instruction? I don't want to search just test because it's going to be a little confusing. There's a lot of pages to this document if you haven't realized. There's an op code map. I don't need that. I've just looped around. So we're going to look for tests now. Test or non-destructive logical and. So we want to test if they're the same. Test or logical and. So that would be instead of subtraction, it would be if something and something. So we're just going to use comp. We're going to subtract subtraction can end up in the negatives if you do it in the wrong direction. So let's find the compare instruction again. Which page was it? Yes, there are actually a lot of pages. There's a thumbnail view, so we might just be able to skim that. It would be around this area. C, C for compare. That's O for or, J for jukes, I for igloo, B for compare. Compare destination to source. Okay, so we're going to look for sub. S for sub. Subtraction. So that would be subtract 10 from destination. So source would be the amount you're subtracting. So compare would be if we subtract one and it's zero, then we've managed to test if it's one. So if we try to subtract a zero and it's a zero, then it's going to be a zero. Okay. Let's try this. Hmm. 
while it's looping, we also probably need to check if BIOS key is done. Although we could have BIOS key be an interrupt or something. I'm not sure. We're in a we're in an infinite loop now. So how could that happen? That could only happen if both of these are zero, I think. So we compare AX minus zero. If that's zero, then it's bail. And that can't be true, can it? Because receive packet is one. And this should be receive new packet. So obviously I'm not understanding how exactly compare works. So let's have a look at this page that I found. So if destination is source, then zero flag is set. If it's less than, then zero flag is not set. And if it's greater than, so if destination is source, then that sets the zero flag. That makes sense. So that should Hmm, neither of those should be jumping. For now though, let's just not loop because we can't seem to figure that out. Return is two. Okay. So two means it bailed there despite receive packet being one. If we set receive packet to zero, will it bail there? Yes. So let's have a look here. Compare AX zero. Um, if AX is zero, then it should be zero based on this logic table here. Um, So if it's equal, if destination is source, then it should be zero and then we will bail. So right now it's zero. And if we set it to one, it should skip it. Yes. And that should give us return two. Okay. And then um, if this returns one, then it should skip it because it compares it to zero and then jumps. Okay, so maybe my code was working just now, but the loop part is broken. So what if we add the loop back? Let's just undo it. Compare zero, compare AX zero. That seems fine. So then we have a loop. Um, and so what we should probably do here to test it is make it so that um, we start with five. Uh, we start with a value of zero, I mean, uh, five, say a valid pointer. Then when we set the receive packet, it'll set receive packet to zero. And then next time when it runs that, it'll fail. So that should return one. It returns two. Why is that? Receive new packets length if it's zero. Oh, we should probably set the length to 10 then to say we have a packet length. Oh, okay, I think, all right, I understand. It, the issue was me because I was associating zero with success where in this case it was not. Okay. So we have some functions here and we have a loop that will loop whenever there's a packet. So let's print new packet. So let's set some data here. Um, new message 
db um, new packet arrive. Um, and then we will have the dollar sign at the end. Uh, we'll have 0d and then 0a, and then the dollar sign. And then we're going to print that. We're going to uh, do um, move ax new message. And then we're going to move dx, I think it was nine, and then do int 21h. Um, YOLO, whatever. No, that didn't work. That just did something weird. All right, so what is a DOS print um, interrupt? I mean, wouldn't it be cool if I managed to uh, guess the interrupt? Right string. It is nine. But it's supposed to be an DS, DX. And that's supposed to be AX. So I had the registers around wrong. And that freezes. Fantastic. Um, move DX. New message, move AX9. And then it should write the string. Yeah. That should work, but it is not working. Is it because I'm setting the base pointer? Let's try that. Sometimes setting the base pointer confuses things. Let me also shut my window because it's starting to get cold. I have so many dreams about snakes last night. Uh, snakes are awful. But it prints nothing. And then it freezes. So... Hmm. Yeah, it's not good. What did the snakes do? They spooked me. I mean, we could just try calling printf. Like, um... We could do move ax new message for printf. That might be a bit nicer to do. I mean, I know it's not assembly, but uh, YOLO. Printf, oops, it should be uh, extern printf. That didn't do anything. It just did, I did an int 21 there. That's weird. Riding around your body trapped, you'll feel the war pressure building. Oh no, you discover you're into bondage. No, no, I'm just spooked about uh, snakes biting me. I don't want to be bitten by snakes. It's like a big fear. So that's not uh, printing. Maybe it needs to be an R than an N. It's not working. Is it possibly because it's not returning? Let's put it at the start. Are there a lot of venomous snakes where you live? I don't know. So printf doesn't really want to work. Is this me? Is this me being bad at programming? Um, I feel like we need to do a uh, DOS hello world thing. The 
let's check this out. AH9 DX108 in 21. DB Hello World. I mean, this looks fine. Is printf overriding something? If I remove printf, does that help? No, it's just not printing anything. So we're going to undo all this code that we've changed today and have a look at how it printed stuff before. It's the same thing. This is a little bit confusing, I'm not going to lie. New packet arrive and we do 0D, 0A, dollar sign. Maybe that should be a single character there. And maybe this needs to be zero nine. I mean, there should be absolutely no difference. DOS, you are making a fool of me in front of everyone on stream. Don't make me bring out the debugger. Okay, I'm bringing out the debugger. Because obviously, you can't figure this out. Okay, so let's find... Let's just break it ASM loop, ASM run. Damn it, I missed it. I don't know how I managed to miss that. So, step, step, step in, push, push, it calls that and that sets AX to one. Um, that jumps it if it's equal, all right. And it moves it, and that jumps it, and that jumps it. So it moves DX to B5, B5, B41, and AX to 21. So what is at memory at DX, uh, DSDX? New packet arrived. That seems to be um, what I want. Okay, so let's continue to uh, modules. I lost my window. Source, locals, watches, modules, code, source. Where's my code gone? I guess I'll just do a space. I lost it. What's it doing? It's not doing the intent 21 anymore. Why? Oh, the task has completed running. Am I am I just telling it to exit? I shouldn't be. DOS print interrupt. Nine AH 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 
other words known as 900. There we go. That's more like it. Toot toot. So AH is the upper bytes of uh, of the AX register. So what would that mean it was doing? It would mean it would be doing instruct uh, zero. All right, so we have this where it thinks that a single packet has arrived. Um, now we need some kind of way to debug this. Uh, I guess we, all right, is there like a break instruction? Probably not. Um, it's fine. One thing I do want to check out. No, all the functions should be, well, this should be available. So let's move BP to be our Let's call this call print new message and then this can just be a little function here that does call print new message. So bail zero means that there's no new packages. So that's fine. Bail two means that there's no, the packet is length zero. So what should we do there? That should mean there's no new packets, I guess. Uh, we'll just say if either of these are zero, then um, we will bail. Although we should probably print an error message about it. Um, yeah, let's do that. Although I'm not sure. I think we'll just make it so that if receive new packet returns zero, we will just um I don't know. This seems like a design flaw, doesn't it? Because these two are interlinked. You sh if you have a packet, it should have some length. That's not a guarantee I'm making. Hmm. And we're calling it each time. I see he can't really return multiple things, can it? Can it return multiple things using a struct? I'm not sure, that's a calling convention thing. I don't want to get too much into that. Um, hmm. I guess we could just make like a guarantee that this will always be a value. Or how about this? You're supposed to run them the opposite way. So if you receive a new packet, then that defines can't receive packet. That makes sense to me. So if you receive a new packet we'll, and there's no packet, we'll return, we'll jump to no new. We're also going to start putting dots in front of stuff that runs inside of a function to kind of scope it like that. No, no, um, then we'll just return zero because we're done. Um, and if current receive packet, 
that will always be correct. So uh, we could add an assert, but we won't. Um, <laughs> um, huh. We could kind of optimize this. So like maybe we could call them twice, like uh, we call receive new packet and that gives us the length, but we need that in a register. So let's, I don't know. We call receive new packet and if that fails us, then whatever. And then we have, um, move um, that to BP. And then we have a, um, AX equals length, BP equals buff. And then we will print that we have a new packet. That seems reasonable. Um, should we push stuff here? If this is supposed to be a function, um, do we have any tabs in the file? Good, no. We should push um, AX and we should push DX. And pop AX and pop DX. There we go. Uh, we should probably get into like the habit of just not pushing all the registers. So let's do that now. Only the stuff we modify. Um, flags, I guess we could push the flags. Um, but no, nah, we're not going to push flags. So we're going to push AX and BP. And then we'll, we don't need to push AX. We just need to push BP actually, because AX gets destroyed anyway. So pop BP. So we have our kind of loop there. Let's see if this works. So in this case, it should quit immediately. No new not defined. New message not defined. All right, I need to define that as dot new message. And again, we don't need to save AX because AX is the return value and we're not really returning a value here, are we? So let's try this. So it's infinite looping and I can control C out of that for some reason. That shouldn't have really been possible. Um, not sure why that was. That's a bug, I think. So it is forever thinking there's a new packet. So how about this? Um, which is strange because there is no new packet. What? Jump no new, receive new packet should be giving us a zero. Oh, it's returning 10. So it, my code was wrong. But return is zero. There we go. We did it. Is that from the Digimon movie? No. All right. So what next? So current receive packet and receive new packet. Let's switch those around a little bit. 
good job? Maybe. Maybe. So, receive new packet should DQ a packet. So, what we're going to actually do here, we're going to have to put this BIOS key thing in the, uh, in the loop here. Yeah, it's finding tabs, that's fine. Um, and then we'll have to, yeah, remote closed would be zero. So what we're going to do is So this is going to DQ packets. So what we might do at the start is just fetch some packets here. So let's do fetch packets. And this can be some code that will um, int fetch packets and it will return zero if there's no packets left. Um, yeah, so fetch packets that will process packets and drive packets. And if the remote is closed, it'll return zero. Um, that's okay. It says quitting, which isn't good. Um, so I'm not too sure about what we'll do with that. Uh, how about we just make it so if the remote is closed, then we will I don't know what we'll do with that because this isn't in the loop anymore. So let's comment this out because this is officially trash code, I guess. Can we do fetch packets at the start? And then we'll do receive new packet. And what we would do is free the receive packet. Um, if there is a receive packet, we will free it. Oops, this isn't Vim. I don't know why I'm not using Vim. If there's a receive packet, then we'll do receive packet equals socket dot incoming dot DQ. Um, then we will return, uh, not return anything. Um, if receive packet doesn't equals zero. Then we'll grab this data here and return the length. Uh, we'll have to remember the offset, I think. Maybe. Oh, this is actually fine because we can just, um, what we can do is we can have the receive packet be an actual, um, the actual packet that we dig here. And then we will um, calculate the length. And then over when we run get current stuff, we can do the length offset. So this is gonna be a bit, a bit of, duplicate code but we can return the user data there so we return the length um, and then we
So here we go. We have, we dereference the headers and we get the user data and then the length. And we return the length and then for receiving packets, we return the user data. And we keep an actual link to the packet there. And then fetch packets. Um, fetch packets should probably be done if there's no packet. Um, so is there a way to check the queue size and then fetch the packets? Let's write that. And then we'll return zero if Wait, is this blocking code? Let's look back here. So we have a while loop here. While process packets. Um, so I'm not sure how many times that runs. Maybe it will just not return anything if there's no current packets, which isn't what we want. We want to be able to fetch the packet and then return a zero if no if connection closed and then fetch packets should be blocking run until new packets or remote closed so receive packet yeah that seems fine let's try this Packet has not been declared, line 58, 70, and 80. Um, that should be received packet. Line 58. Missing return value. Ah, oh, okay. So we'll just return one for now, I guess. All right, let's see if this works. So it returns zero and hangs. Uh, uh, put the return after the cleanup. Oh, it doesn't hang. It just cleans up the socket, I guess. Is that because it's trying to connect with a timeout or something? All right, so it returns zero immediately. So let's just try and check how many packets we have. Actually, no, we'll print if the socket has closed. This will run until there's new packets or the remote is closed. So the remote close check should be after fetch packets. This will probably have to be merged into here. So is it gonna, it's hanging there, but I'm not sure why. I guess it's because we should write done or clean. Okay. So that's just the cleanup time. Maybe it's because it's getting packets. So what we should probably do here is just mimic our old code, which just loops forever. So what we will do is fetch packet 
Oh, it's in the copy thing. So we will copy this code over here. Um, and then we will do while no packets, we will process that. Um, and or while no packets, while the socket remote closed is zero and we have no packets. And then if it's remote is closed, we just return zero, but it says new packets. So how do we figure out how many packets there are? Sock incoming dot DQ. Sock. It would be tcp.cpp, dq, clear queues, pending, um, outgoing.entries. So entries might be what we want. And soc incoming.entries equals zero. Um, okay, that seems fine to me. New packet arrive. So Twitch just gives us one new packet. I mean, the, the IRC server. So let's just do... And then netcat67. What do my socks smell like? I don't know. What do your socks smell like? Um, and we should probably just shove the BIOS key thing in there, maybe. Because that's, uh, that's a hot loop there. That's where it blocks. So we might want to put the BIOS key logic in there. but we also probably want to move that a bit later. So that's not disconnecting. We're going to have to do some manual testing here. So we've netcat a little server there, bot, let's do hi there, bots up. So It seems to be infinite looping. Print new message. Does print new message just hang stuff? It shouldn't, right? Like this should return if, if things aren't working. So maybe I don't know how to do that properly. What do you mean how sad? I think there's something fishy about my print new message function. Ooh. Oh, or it exits there. We do hi, new packet arrive, and then it stops. So it's obviously returning properly. So it jumps back here and then it must be stuck in here, I guess. Because that's the only other hot loop we have. So let's just write waiting for packets. Um, let's close that. Oops. Let's see. Waiting for packets. Hi. Hi, 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 hi. 
and then it's still waiting for packets. So let's just try printing the flags that we're testing. And I assume freeing the buffer is working. Oops. I don't know why I type. I'm just typing stuff into any terminal I see. We do seem to be making good process today. Um, which I'm pretty happy about. Bot. Hi. Hi, hi. Close. It doesn't realize that the end has closed. Why not? Sock is remote closed, should return zero, correct? Let's add a sleep. That could be helpful. Cannot connect to host. Okay, whatever. But waiting for packets. Hi. New packet arrive. New packet arrive. Hi. And it doesn't think that new packet arrive. So let's reassess this logic. So obviously, um, incoming entries has uh, worked. We've managed to get to this code to receive a new packet twice. So let's just confirm that by adding a print and write new packet receive. Um, and the only difference there would be that it would drive it twice. Uh, so the first time it drived, it worked. I mean, let's just double check that this is actually getting incremented. If sock incoming entries doesn't equal zero, then we're going to skip. We're going to skippy whip. because we need some uwu code here. Ending missing string literal 25. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Unable to connect to host. So let's solve this problem by seeing if we can make it netcat always stay open. I feel like I've already done this. Keep inbound sockets open for multiple connections. Okay. Okay. Bot waiting for packets. Hey, where what's up? New packet arrive. Two new packet arrive. Um what? That's not what I want. Hi there. And when it does new packet arrive, we don't get the, uh, the prints here. So what is happening here? Oh yeah, I print two calls. So that equals one packet. That makes sense. And then it runs receive new packet. And it's not skipping this. So could it be that we actually filled up the buffer? Or incoming entries is always zero. That would make sense given what we see. See, we're waiting for packets here. And then 
Oops, this should be here. What am I doing? Um, New packet received, new packet work. All right, so what we might do is just rewrite this because this looks like a big top tail mess anyway. So what we're going to do is remove the entries thing. While remote is closed, uh, we'll set receive packet equals zero here. And receive packet equals zero. We'll do that and then we'll do receive packet. Uh, this, this is a big loop. Um, so while the mode is closed equals zero. You feel dizzy so you will go to sleep. Oh, okay, good night. Good night. Good night. Actually, let's just make this a trashy loop. Um, while socket remote is closed. I don't want to make a big old trashy loop here. Um, mm, 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 mm. Let's think about this for a second. So we want to loop while there's while there's no packet or it's not closed. So there's, we want to loop until one of the two things happen. Loop until closure or loop until new packet. So that seems reasonable here. So I believe this code would do that. So what we might want to do here is actually just have receive packet equals DQ. And then copy that back here. I'm using a horrible mix of spaces and tabs. All right. Um, and then if we have a receive packet, which we always should have here, we can just return here. This seems fine. This seems like the right way to do it because we're trying to get a packet using DQ. And if we don't, we're just going to keep trying. Um, so if we do hi, is that going to help? New packet arrive. Good. Um, what about there? Should that arrive? Hi there. It's not arriving. If I quit, it doesn't work. So what do I normally use? What do you mean? Let's move this here. Let's just make this. Um, so we run that. Then if the socket is remote closed, we'll return and then we'll sleep. Put the sleep there for debugging tabs or spaces. I don't know. I don't care anymore. I just use auto formatters. They just automatically format your code to look nice, but we're not going to do that here. So we're going to keep processing packets until it closes or, and we could actually just put that there. While receive packet equals zero. There we go. 
that's nicer. Maybe that'll fix my problems. Um, let's add some print apps. Waiting for a packet. Uh, then we'll write packet got, and then we'll write end got. What the? This should be not equal to zero. Why am I trying to free a null? That's weird. Maybe that's what's happening. I'm not freeing the freaking packet, so it's getting choked. And that could be why. But that wouldn't explain why it's not uh, detecting the end of the connection. Waiting for packet, waiting for packet. Um, so we're going to say, hi, new packet, hi, new packet, hi, new packet, wowzers, new packet, um, close, done, we did it, Reddit, okay. Um, and then we should probably put the length just to test. We have user data and we have the length. What we could do is just go back to our code from before. And what we would do is call print um, incoming packet. And so what this will do is take um, AX equals lang, BP equals buff. And what we will do is print incoming. Um, then an end of line would be, there we go. And then we would print new message And the end of line, and then we would print um, the buffer, and this is not going to work very well. So what we would do for now is just make it so that we set the end of the packet to a dollar sign for now, just for testies. No, not testies. Uh, testing. Um, There we go. So dollar sign just to make sure. Let's run that again. And let's do wmake. Fetch packets has not been declared. I'll fetch you a packet. So let's try this. Bot. Hi. There. What's up? Um, that works surprisingly well, actually. Why is it doing a new line, though? Is that because I'm putting a new line? NL. Um, okay. Oh, no, it's because there's a new line no, they should, it's, mm. oh, I'm a little mad. I'm not quite understanding this. Let's just try it with the, the Inspiracy Daemon. Incoming IRC notice looking up your host name. So that's good. Um, can you describe the testes? I don't know. I got to put a jacket and socks on real quick. Um, we'll also dump this in the BIOS key thing here. 
just so we can control X out of the application. Backspace, 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 and then we just tab that a bit. There we go. And then we save, and then we do um, start inspiracy, and then we'll do W make, and I'll put my socks on real quick while we think about what the heck's going on. We'll have to do line buffering in a moment, so we might as well just start on that, huh? Um, but we will need the output buffer for that, I believe. Which is fine. Um, get my jacket on. Right now we're just printing the incoming buffer, so we want to get a hold of the outgoing buffer. How did we do this before? The outgoing buffer, we get the xmit buffer. And then, um, so I guess we do that. And then we would have a, say, send thing that swaps it. So whenever we want to use the xmit buffer, we would ask for it in much the same way. But um, it would also send stuff with the length, but as an input. So screw it. Let's try that, huh? Um, we're going pretty well for time. So all X done or clean. So we're slowly factoring this into into a bit of a decent program layout. Um, we will have to refactor it a little bit, but let's, uh, let's look at our assembly again. And so instead of printing our incoming packet, we're going to want to echo, uh, no. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll print it, but we'll also send it. I don't understand why it's, uh, Uh, I don't understand why there's a new line at the start of things, but maybe that's just a protocol thing. Maybe this code over here is being smart by a, uh, if there's a line that's empty or whatever, I don't know. So we're just going to send back what we get. We get the length and we get the buffer. So let's, uh, do the same thing. We're going to do call send packet. And for now, we'll just dump all this incoming stuff out. Or no, yeah, hmm. We'll call receive new packet should be um, what would it be? You know, we'll actually just ignore the current packet. We'll still do it though. Um, and we want to have a send new packet that would send us um, a message. So let's do message and that can be db hello world test n. And that length would be I think that's it. Um, I'm not too sure if that's how you measure length in NASM. We'll see. Um, so we'll do send new packet or uh, we will do, yeah, send packet for now. And that will just do a printf. So let's do move AX message, move DX it should be BX here, um, message length. And then we'll do print. Uh, sorry, send packet. Send packet. And that will be 
um, event eight underscore t packet. And then this will be car, sorry, int length. Um, and let's see, we should just do printf packet is s uh, len i packet length return zero. And let's see how that goes. I believe that's how the calling convention for what call works. And we'll do a net cat there. It's already in use. Is it? Oh, I guess it is from the IRC thing. Label or instruction expected on start of line. Um, I think it would be DB. Yeah, double byte send packet not defined. So that needs to be defined. I wonder how we're going to identify the buffer. Hmm, not sure. Is that frozen? Kind of looks like it froze. So let's see. Let's netcat there. Do bot. Let's do hi. Hi, hi. And it is not calling send packet. I don't think. Hmm. Should be calling send packet. Um, I don't see anything obviously wrong here. What about alt X? Oh, I didn't put a new line at the end. Is that your issue, really? So let's write in hi. Hi there. Packet is hello world test garbage and length zero. Why would it be like that? Length zero, I guess that's why. Um, it also should be zero terminated. Um, so it might be double dash thing. I'm not too sure. Let's see, NASM spring length. Okay, so it's that minus message, gotcha. Let's try running again. Or hang. I don't understand why sometimes it hangs, but I'm just going to assume that it's for the best. So let's do hi. Hi. It's only showing every second packet, which is a little bit weird. And the length is still a little strange.
let's search up this NASM dollar sign minus message. Message land equal. So it's message land equal. That minus that. Okay. You might have to start putting stuff on one lines like that if they're just data. It still says length zero. Huh. So it's strange to me, I guess. Do I need to not use a label for that? No, it still says length to zero. Hmm. Is it because I'm dereferencing it? That seems like a bad idea, right? Maybe because it's a macro. It doesn't need that. And I'm trying to dereference null memory. Um, and then let's just do that. I'm kind of trying to brute force it here. It doesn't seem to be the best idea. So we'll have a little bit more of a go. And then we'll start uh, figuring out what's going on. Okay. First thing I want to know is why uh, why is it only giving me every second packet? Um, new packet len i. So let's try that. Should probably make this bigger. So, bot, hi, there, hi, there. So, it's not getting packets often enough? What? What is happening here? What have I done? Huh? Packet one, packet two. I don't know. I have two issues at once, which isn't a good idea. So what we might do is think about this. It doesn't make sense to me that this is how things should be working. Because we have receive new packet it runs until we have receive packet. And then we get the packet length. So is netcat not sending the right amount of packets? Is it buffering them? Do we have Wireshark installed? Let's do that. Or TCP dump or something. We'll see. 
Hmm? Let's just confirm that the number of packets out are the same that we get detected. I'm going to quickly, I'm going to quickly capture this, but uh, I have to avoid actual traffic. So be right back. Okay. So. We're back here. Our bot got the packet new length three. Um, that would be high, but it has not got the other packet here, which is there. So we're skipping packets. You have two packets here, let's say high and there, and it's skipping a packet. So what we're going to do here is just think, we're going to have a quick think about how this works. We call receive new packet at freeze an existing packet. If we have it, um, it will DQ a packet while the DQ is zero, then while it is zero, it will do single up packets and then it will DQ it again. So then we do IP and stuff. The next time it'll do DQ. Hmm. Hmm. We will have to add some printing. So getting new packets. I'll just copy that and put remote closed quitting. Um, and then we'll do uh, sometimes it should not say getting new packets in that case. Anyway, I'm getting a bit sidetracked. So what we're going to do now is do we're going to debug the bot. So we're going to go into the um, assembly code. I think enter runs to it. No, it's F9. And then we're going to do F5 to run to it, which didn't work. Run, run to cursor is F7. Okay. Right, file, uh, file. How do I exit this? I got trapped in the debugger. So we're going to do F7 to run to here. Oh, I render clean up. Ah. So ASM run, we're going to run to there with F7. And uh, it has to be waiting to connect, I guess. I don't understand. Is setup socket not working?
we're going to do ASM run to there, space, space. ASM run is hanging. Maybe. Is this, okay, I think I know what's happening. It's not going to step through the assembly. At least I hope that's what's happening. So let's jump over to, well, it worked before. So let's jump down, unable to connect to host and it returns one. Why can you not connect to the host buddy? Should be able to. You definitely should be able to. One set up. It goes to return one and then just hangs, maybe. Is it because the code numbers are out of line because I've added code? That could be it. Okay, that makes sense because the socket closed for some reason. Looks like I hit the close button, so I guess the reason was me. All right, so it seems to have been a line thing. So let's step into this. So we're going to call a receive new packet. That's fine. So getting new packets, let's give it a new packet. It gets that new packet. I call it twice. Okay, that explains one mystery. And the message length there is actually two. So let's go to receive packet. No, we're going to, we're going to quit out of this and fix that bug. Oh no, we're not, I guess. We're just going to keep going. So we get a packet, we call send packet, and we do file, no, we do run, trace into, which is F8, and we're going to view the assembly of this. So we're going to do code assembly, and where does it read push DX and then AX? Push AX, move AX, move eight to AX, then call stack, then pop AX. All right, so that must be some kind of stack thing. Fine. And then it pushes GX, and then it pushes AX, um, I'm using AX and BX, I think. Okay, let's try that without using AX and BX. Hi. Please. Hi. Hi, 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 hi. It has just frozen. That's fine. Sometimes it does that. Bot getting new packets. Hi. Hi. Having it spam getting new packets is not helpful. We'll just have it sleep a little bit. Where is it getting those? Uh,
getting new packets. So if we send hi, hello world length 20. That seems correct, kind of. Uh, it, it, okay, let's count this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. That's weirdly specific. Is it not escaping things? All right, so what's new line? I think it's a zero A and then it's zero zero. So the fact that I didn't escape stuff properly, probably bad, right? So we go back here. Hi, Kaz. Hello, world test. All right, so this is working now. Well, at least the calling the C stuff works. So let's loop that back to move AX. Okay, we're gonna do move DX, AX, and move AX. Wait, AX, no, DX is going to be, yeah, DX is the length and AX is going to be the buffer pointer. There we go. So this should try and loop it back a bit. Wow, someone said hello to me in the chat. Pathetic. So let's do bot. Hi Kaz, and it kind of works. <laughs> um, because BP is actually the length. AX is the buffer and BP is the length. Or, BP should be, yeah, BP is the length. What? I shouldn't be running this here. No celebrating in chat. What are when Cos is streaming? <laughs> That's even worse. Um, okay, so that doesn't work. That That's worse functionality. Let's think about this. So receive new packet gives us the length and we move the length to BP. Now, current receive packet is AX. AX is going to be the string. So we already have AX set and we're gonna move that to BP. Might as well just move that to uh, DX actually because that's what we use it. Plenty of time for this stream. Yeah. I have to say after a few years, it's finally good that I'm starting to program this thing. Um, talk about a, uh, a build up. Ah, look, look, look at this. It kind of echoes. Wow, fancy. Ugh. Okay, so that sends it to the packet. But we don't want to just send stuff to the packet, right? It doesn't send the packet, it just prints it. We don't want that. 
put this sleep one here for a debug. So we want to be able to write to a buffer. Hmm. Sleepy little what? Yeah. Um, so we have this stuff to quit. So now it's time to handle sending. And if we look at our napkin plan here, um, we've gone kind of off the deep edge, the deep end. But we're now kind of at this part where we want to do um, a copy. We want to copy to some buffer without going over the buffer. Well, no, we, we don't have to go over the buffer. We just need to know that the buffer is uh, still... Yeah, no, not going over the buffer. And so when we want to send a character or whatever, we're going to copy it into the buffer. And then if it's a new line or something, well, whatever. So let's just work on getting the buffer first. That seems like a good first step, doesn't it? So we need to be able to get a transmit buffer. So it should be send new packet and it should give us the length, maybe? Uh, I don't know what, do we need length for it? Um, length is something you should test at compile time. Um, Let's check here. How do we deal with that before? Xmit buff. Okay, then it does check the actual length. I think. No, it doesn't. It just has me writing. Check if it's going to fit. Thank you, past jukes. Thanks a lot. But much like past jukes, we're just going to assume it fits for now. <laughs> that seems reasonable. I'm getting a bit, uh, I think that might have to wait till the next stream. I'm not sure. Um, I think my mind is out of it. I think I've run out of steam. So it might be best to leave it here on a good note. And look at what we've made. We've made a thing that echoes kind of using printf. So if we do hello world. What's up? And we did it using the power of a whole bunch of C++ um, wrapping MTCP. Um, and then a little library. This is going to be where we put all our junk. I do want to know why the calling convention uses DX instead of BX. I'm going to guess that it has something to do with the addressing. Um, calling conventions want to be able to put stuff uh, in registers fairly easily without special cases. So if we go and look for address generation, if I can find it. Can I find it?
here. This looks kind of like it, yeah. So if we look at the registers that you can use for indexed addressing, we have BX, BP, SI, and DI, um, and that's, there's no DX there. So let's search this up. Um, x86 calling convention registers. Um, BX, maybe that's used for, I don't know. Yes, it uses the stack for a lot of stuff. Um, Whatcom register, EAX, EDX, EBX, and ECX. So it prefers EAX and EDX and then EBX and ECX. And variadic functions fall back to the Whatcom stack-based calling convention. Interesting. So does that mean we could call printf using the stack? Let's have a look, see. So let's say print format is um, incoming s, and then we, we put a new line um, and then a null terminator. And then instead of sending a packet, maybe we will do um, extern printf. And then we would push stuff on the stack in order, I guess. Or I guess it would be the other way around, right? So it can pop it. It's a 50-50 shot. So let's uh, push. Um, I guess we're just going to push the incoming... We'll put a length there too. So we'll push um, the buffer, which is AX, the length, and then um, print format. I don't know if that needs to be a far pointer. Let's see. Undefined symbol send packet. That's okay. We're not doing that right now, but Hi. So that's not working. Would it work if I called printf? Possibly. That may just be the key to running printf calling it. Oh, it worked. Um, so I think we're just going to use printf instead of DOS interrupts because we get formatting. And there's no real point in using DOS interrupts for this. Um, and it just saves us time and effort. Like we're already using C code and whatever, so it's not an issue really. Um, should we be using version control for this? You may be asking. Well, we're about three years into development without version control. And it's all gone fine. Look, I'll, uh, I'll copy my bot folder onto my uh, network. Oh, that's right. Um, let me just grab the IP address for my computer. Um, um, I think it's this. Host network is unreachable. Oh, that's right. I have IP version six turned off on this um, because last night I spent all my time for some reason. I woke up and I was like, I'm gonna DOS stream. 
But first, it might be time to renumber my network so I can have IP version six all uh, all over my uh, network uh, in my specifically in my um, VMs. I decided I wanted my VMs to not be natted because uh, no nat November is coming up. And I decided that I just can't deal with the NAT anymore. And so now my VM is actually on a separate subnet that um, is bridged to, to my home address, my home subnet, which is uh, 27.1, which is my computer. And then the guest network is 28.1. Then you have the WAN internet. And then if I enable IP version six, I get, you know, a full WAN address that's in uh, a subnet just for this VM, just for this little bridge I have on this computer. Um, it was worth it. So let's just do bot.old. I don't have the permissions to rename bot. Well. Wow. I don't, I might not have a folder here. Okay, hang on a second. Let's see, CD data public. Um, here we go. And let's remove that Arch Linux. Oh, no, I'm gonna use that later. So bot dot old probably, oh no, I can do that. So bot copy that there. Um, see how long it takes. 298 megabytes. That's a normal amount of files in there. Um, I'm not going to wonder what the hell is taking up 298 megabytes. And we're gonna date stamp it. So 2021, 10, 23. So we've got a little bit of time left and I just want to be happy about what I've made. Um, we seem to be doing pretty good here. Uh, what else do we have? I've been reading through other manuals. So if we check the bot folder here, I've been reading through the Whatcom manuals. I'm not through them yet. I just like skimming them. Um, the assembly uh, thing for the Whatcom thing isn't very helpful. We also have this assembly language reference for the 8086, which we might want to use, um, or the 8088. It says 86, and it has all the uh, instructions here that we would want that we would want to use. Um, and I believe it has. Does it have anything about addressing? Probably not but uh, very fascinating, very interesting. Um, yeah, you know what? I might just use the bathroom and then we can do a little bit of uh, vaguely interesting stuff. I'll get my, uh, my craft knife, be right back. Um, also, this is the end of this DOS part. So, uh, just to make it clear. No, we're not doing video games. No, this is the end of the DOS bot part. Um, thanks for coming. I'll see you later. But we're, we're not actually ending the stream, though. I'm just ending the DOS VOD. Does that make sense? Okay, everyone's left. All right, I'll see you all in a bit.